And, and, yeah. And maybe you know the answer because nobody else seems to know the answer to it. What happens when the purchasing power officially gets to zero? Find out why Lynette Zhang warns about the impending effects of the soaring U.S. Treasury debt on the U.S. economy. A concise and crucial exploration of the complexities will give you a better understanding of the potential disruptions. This thought-provoking analysis with Lina Tezang focuses on the economic landscape. So keep watching till the end of this video. They think that it's all about opinion at the same time that you can clearly see that the value of the currency is headed towards zero. Why do they never talk about that, right? Why does nobody ever talk about their own data? But in reality, people, food inflation is still soaring. Yes, yeah, coming down a little bit over here with eggs and maybe a little bit over here with milk. But in all the other areas, it's soaring. And so even when you're looking at the latest jobs number, what jobs mm -hmm. are those? Are those the high paying jobs when we're also listening to all these layoffs in the banking sector and the mergers and acquisitions sector in, in, well, I don't know how many, how many companies are laying off how many people? So, you know, it really doesn't make sense if you are living through it and you're still struggling to pay your bills because inflation has begun to rear its ugly head again, even in the official numbers, which we all know are pretty bogus. So it, it's just a lie to sucker you into getting a level of confidence. Maybe they can pull this off. And, and, yeah. but, and maybe you know the answer because nobody else seems to know the answer to it. What happens when the purchasing power officially gets to zero? That was true for all these, right? And then, and then some. So what happens when it gets to zero? Well, we saw the monetary velocity chart on just the M2, because of course they took the M3, the full money away from us in 2006. But I'm seeing a spike in the monetary velocity in a very, very, very pervasive way. This is what I was looking for to indicate the start of the hyperinflation. Monetary velocity is the number of times that, that money changes hands. So let's just say I have a good week and I decide, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I can afford that car that I was wanting to buy, but was postponing. So now, okay, I, I had a good week. I'm going to the car dealership. I buy a car. Right. That right. money is transferring to say the person that sold me that car. And that person goes, gee, you know, I had a pretty good week. Maybe I'll take my spouse on that weekend that we were talking about. So now the money changes from my hands to his hands. They go on vacation and it's transferring again. And hey, they go to a restaurant. He's feeling flush. They leave a bigger tip and the wait person goes, well, now I can buy Jimmy the sneakers that I was wanting to buy him. So it's the speed at which money changes hands. And it is an indication of a truly robust economy for a while up until 1997. The last time that debt was actually stimulative in the economy but ever since 1997, it has been dropping to levels below where it was back in 1933 during the Great Depression. Lately, it has been spiking because there have been a couple of blip ups, uh, but they were not pervasive. They were small blips. Now it is going up in a pervasive way, which is more of an indication that people realize that the currency is losing value. That's that rapid inflation, right? right. So they're rushing to spend it while it still has some value before the prices of those goods and services go up. And that's why that major, major, major pattern shift in the velocity of money indicates that for me, the beginning yeah. of the hyperinflation. And, and we are hearing this around the globe. And even in this country, how sticky inflation is, how it's started to move up a little bit, they're playing it down. And I think that all of this good news 
is about hiding what's really happening. Oh, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth, this is barterable for me, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. You get yourself as independent and self-sufficient as you can because food, and we're, we're already seeing that around the world, food becomes the single biggest issue for people around the world. So what can you do to create security in all of those areas? And, you know, for me, I absolutely knew without a doubt in my mind that the system died in 2008. So I started on this journey. I, 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 I wasn't a farmer. I wasn't even much of a gardener. You know, that wasn't my thing. You know, as an economist, I cannot deny what I see and what I know. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we are so, our, our GDP, which is all the money that flows through the system, is at what, 27 trillion? Yes. And the debt is some north of 33 tr trillion. And is that really everything that we're seeing? Because what they let us see is just the tip of the iceberg. And we're, we're really looking at quadrillions and we're watching the bankers get into position for what they call consolidation. But that really is banking crisis where people, yeah, they avoided the bail in. Well, they, they didn't, they bailed in the system back in March, but those issues have not gone away, especially with the interest rates. And when you're talking about a debt, a death spiral in debt, having to look when you have debt whether you're a government a corporation or an individual you have to service it you have to pay the debt you have to pay it off you have to roll it over or you have to default it's it's not like you got a million choices and well you know with interest rates held at zero for so long and this massive wall of debt that's coming due whether it's governmental corporate or individual into this significantly higher interest rate environment since 2008 is that it takes more and more and more of that printing and they get less and less and less result because it's all about the confidence. And we've witnessed since 2008, the bank to bank confidence was gone as witnessed by the inter, uh, interbank lending, the central bank to central bank confidence was gone as we witnessed in 2015 uh, with the Swiss surprise. And we can go into those specifically, but you know, we've just been, and then what was a year ago last uh, June when the central bank to the Wall Street crowd, they lost confidence. There's only one level of confidence left. So it's not like you have all of these to go through we are at the end and that's the public confidence. And that's why what you brought up in the beginning is so critical because if, if you aren't feeling it yourself, if you have enough income that inflation doesn't really impact whether or no. not you can put food on the table or gas in the car or buy the things that you want, you think everything is fine. But at that lower level where all of that matters, Thank you for joining us in this insightful journey with Lynette Zhang. If you found this analysis eye-opening, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more essential updates. Stay informed as we navigate the dynamic world of finance together. Your engagement is invaluable, and we look forward to having you with us on the next episode. Until then, stay prepared, stay informed, and take care.